Hello. How are you? Hi. Hey, it's Annika and Beth Silhouette. Hey. Hi, sorry. Beth, can you send me a different picture? The one that we have for you is just too low resolution. Uh, that, and I don't know where, what I have. I will try. Thank you. Bully your husband into taking one or something. <laughs> Or just regular phone video, phone picture? That's board? fine. Yeah. Don't stress yeah. about it. Yeah. Okay. How's that? No more silhouette. There we go. Is Cecilia going to join us today? Oh, it's going to be my question. I think so. There she is. She goals is now the host. Yes, there she is. There she is. Hello. We were just talking about the Ishib Summit. How are you? Um, you talk about the Ishib Summit? Oh, How yeah. You know, there's this kind of party thing that happens. Um, <laughs> we're hoping that you'll all join in. So. <laughs> How's that planning going? Um, great. And I have some questions and, and other things to, to pose at this group. So um, did we do a popcorn round? We have not, we're just uh, popping in. We're just popping in. Well, welcome everybody. Um, we were talking about, hmm, I know that we've talked about superheroes and because um, we talked about unsung heroes. And what's a good, does anybody have a good popcorn question to start off? How do you like to take your popcorn? <gasps> All right. Um, that's a good question. So Jeff Bennett, how do you like your popcorn? Lots of butter. There. Uh, <laughs> that was see. <laughs> Let's go with uh, Annika is next to me that way. Yeah, lots of butter and salt. Over to Beth. Yeah, salt too. Um, hello? Unmute Beth here. I'll unmute you. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Whoop. Whoever was talking didn't, I didn't hear them call me, so sorry. Yeah, just a lot of movie butter flavor with some salt. And I'll pop corn to, is it Tibby? Uh, yeah, lots of butter and salt. <laughs> and I'm going to pop corn over to Megan. Hey, Megan. Yay, Tibby. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you. see you at the vlog. I know. Um, so I like to do it on the stove top with, um, I'll make it with like canola oil or avocado oil. And then I put butter and uh, nutritional yeast and salt mm. and I will popcorn over to Katie. So I like mine pretty plain, um, butter, salt, a little bit of pepper every now and then. Nice. And I'm going to popcorn to... Annika. Annika went. Annika went. Do you have I think Jess she, or was, Lauren? It was hard to hear her. I think I might have. Yeah. Okay. How about Lauren? Annika, your mic is pretty low. It's a little muffled, I think, is the. Yeah, there's something funky going on with your sound. Try it again. How is this? One, two, three? It's better. That's better. Um, okay, I like all the things you mentioned, but I also like tahine, which is like chili and salt and lime mix. It's like a Mexican thing, but it's delicious. And it's spicy popcorn, spicy, salty, buttery popcorn. <laughs> and I passed maybe to, I think Jess? Sure, uh, extra butter, extra salt. And is anyone left? Let's see here. I think that's it. Cool. I will, I wait, oh, I'm gonna chime it. in. Um, so I too make popcorn on the stove. I usually put coconut, um, um, coconut oil in the bottom. And then um, after I pop it, it's butter and truffle salt. I am a big truffle salt popcorn fiend, so. Um, there you go. Um, and a uh, quick up, 
updates before we launch into the program? Any quick updates from anybody? No, 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 no. All right. Um, I do have some information on the eShip Summit, um, just as a quick update. The dates remain the same. Hopefully those are on your calendar as um, June 29th to July 1st. First, Lauren. Um, Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> and then, I think it's through the second, isn't it? Um, so. Yeah, it's, uh, I have to look at my own email because it's on the bottom of my email. But, um, but there is, there's a possibility of having some things happen um, just before. So don't be surprised if you just like are eager to come to Kansas City right before. Um, there will be um, some other things happening and, um, and I want you to think about your, your very best ecosystem builder friends in your community and who you would like to have accompany you um, to the eShip Summit because we know that ecosystem building is a team sport. So pick your team carefully and well and, um, and get as many diverse voices in there. That would be great. So registration will start um, sometime in March and we will definitely let people know before that um, to keep an eye out. If you've been to the eShip Summit before, you'll get information on pre-registration. And if you have not been to the eShip Summit prior, then open registration will start uh, about a week after that. So yes, Katie. Uh, is there going to be a mayor's conference right before the eShip uh, this year again? Yes. So um, the mayors usually get in a day or so before. And just as in the, the past couple of years, there will be some opportunity for some serendipitous um, interactions. We're um, still working on the design of that. But if your mayor, if you would like to get your mayor to come, that's really great. If they're a senior staff wants to come um, that would be also fabulous so the mayor's summit um, registration will be starting very shortly as well so, so is there like any pre-information on the mayor's summit because i was at the eship summit not last year but in 2018 and and there are 12 municipalities in my county and none of our mayors were there well that that should be a, a good call to action um, there is a website about the mayor's conference that you can point them to, to let them know what's happened in the past. Um, as we get going in, the, in this conversation, I will link that in the chat so you can take a look at it. But in the interest of time and all of these stories that need to be told, um, is there anything else you wanna share, Lauren, before I turn it over to the eShip champions to facilitate? I would just say that there is pre-registration open for the mayors. So if you look on that uh, event website that Cecilia is going to forward you, that might be something good that you want to uh, forward to some of your local mayors there, Katie, just as an FYI. Yeah. So, um, and, and I think if I'm not mistaken, just like in the eShip Summit, pre-registration is open to the mayors and the mayoral staff that have attended in the past, but definitely the information is there. So that's great. Um, thank you, Lauren. Annika, uh, your show. Awesome. Um, Jeff and I will be co-hosting, as per usual, everybody jump in. So um, I did want to take the opportunity to bring you all up to speed with the Unsung Heroes of Ecosystem Building campaign, um, let you know what's happening there. And then we would very much like to talk a little bit more about, how do I phrase this? Um, what all of you are bringing to the table. So we've been meeting and will continue to meet, which is fantastic, but I know that we have so many assets with each of you, be it networks, skills, interests, and um, I would love to see how we can leverage all that more, either for the campaign or really, I mean, just the overall storytelling call. So that's something we will wanna talk about um, in this call today. And then, um, yeah, I just hope we have a fruitful discussion. Everybody, as per usual, jump in with any questions you may have. Um, anything else, Jeff, before I give an update on the campaign? I don't think so. Okay, great. Um, so just to bring y'all up to speed, I don't know if everybody knows, TV, I haven't seen you in a while, so, so maybe this is new for you. We launched a campaign called Unsung Heroes of Ecosystem Building Resource Nominations for about two weeks. 
we got 70 nominations um, of ecosystem builders all across North America. We reached out to those nominees and asked them for asked them a couple of questions, sort of like an interview, and we heard back from 26 now, who we will feature between now and the eShip Summit. So um, we'll have new spotlights coming out every week. Those are hosted and live on ecosystembuilderhub.com. So if you want to check it out, that's where you want to go. And alongside with these spotlights of individuals, we're also talking about the seven eShip goals. So there will be a post every three weeks about a different eShip goal to introduce people to the goal. And uh, the effort really has been focused on finding out what's happening in the field and reporting back some of those good and best practices. For example, I just worked on the post about diversity and inclusion. We're hearing from a few of the people who are uh, in the spotlight how they're translating diversity and inclusion in their ecosystems and what specific programs and initiatives are. So it's incredibly rich information, which I'm so excited to share with everybody. Um, in terms of campaign, as I said, it lives on ecosystembuilderhub.com and we are also promoting it on Twitter. Um, with that being said, this is very limited to people who are on Twitter and who go to ecosystembuilderhub.com. So I would love to put out the question for everybody else, um, how else we can promote this content, not in an effort to, to show how awesome this campaign is, but I think once you start reading the spotlights, you see how much heart and emotion is in this work and how much work people put into submitting the information. And like, it always makes me almost weepy <laughs> reading some of those interviews because these people are so committed to doing good for their communities. And I want that knowledge to be out in the world. I want to celebrate them. I want to embarrass them for getting so much good feedback and people sending them an email and saying, I just read your spotlight. You're amazing. Keep going. Um, I think that's sort of one of the currencies that we as a, as a team can provide to the field. So whatever other ideas you have to get this content in front of other people, I would absolutely love to. I just had an idea. Um, and this is going to be mostly for Lauren and Cecilia working on the summit content. Would it be interesting to have like a, in between keynotes or talks or program elements of the summit to have like a slideshow going on that kind of shows um, the photos of some of these people and a snippet of a quote or something and then uh, where they can go to find out more about that. So funny you should ask because on the call that I just got off, we shared about the unsung heroes. Um, Which was that? The uh, the planning for the eShip oh, summit. Yeah. The event planning call. The yeah. event planning call, and uh, and I and we this this content was actually brought up, and um, and that question came up. What what would you like to showcase, and how could we best showcase something like that? So that would be, um, so those of you who were at the twenty seventeen eShip Summit um, may remember um, a wall of faces of founders, um, which was an interesting display and talked about what entrepreneurs look like and, um, and all of that. So I don't know, I, I think slideshow, I think, you know, what, whatever, like think about some ideas of how you would like, um, and then we'll definitely um, loop you in with the um, with the Wellington team, but um, but yeah, think about think about what that looks like, and, and we're happy to to look at what what can be done. So, Lauren, what are you thinking? I um I don't have any thoughts about this maybe until March when I have a little more bandwidth. But in addition to what because my brain's kind of playbook mush right now, so thank you for understanding. But one thought I'd like to think about a little bit more into is I know that at the summit I will want to do some kind of playbook activation around some of the leadership skills and proficiencies that we are looking at but I think so much of it dovetails into the stories of ecosystem builders I'm just lifting up how there could be a perhaps an intersection so that we can maybe double up on some other kind of activation there. So I'm just putting that out there now. Um, non eShip Summit related, um, I would like to try to get the Unsung Heroes campaign 
into the Impact Hub Global Newsletter. So they have a newsletter that goes out to all the 105 hubs around the world that, um, and I was part of that team and so I'd be more than happy to see if I can get a hold of the communications directly there because I think if we want this to have global reach, perhaps, I know that this language and ecosystem building is um, something the impact hubs really care about on many levels. So I can um, see how I can make that connection. <laughs> Um, one way to think about it, Lauren, and we can also talk offline, is um, we're, we're doing our best to sort of have a post about each of the ESHIP goals and link all of the related unsung heroes to that. So you kind of have a central post about a certain topic that might be an easier pitch that then links to the different spotlights of everybody who submitted some information with regards to that topic. Um, but we can, we can talk more about that if you want. Wonderful. Yeah, I know I kind of took it off on a little bit of a tangent there. I think it's kind of back to Cecilia's main point of if um, there's a lot of options about how to intervene, perhaps at the summit, she offered a couple of them. There's, I, I'm having some thoughts about how that might work with the playbook. So I think there's more to discuss there. Wonderful. Great. Um, Cecilia, there's another question I had. Um, from the people who have submitted their information, I don't know that any of them are in the eShip community, and I don't know if any of them have ever even heard of the eShip Summit. Um, we're, we're, we're in contact with these 26 people, so Beth is one of them, and Eric, so these people know, but the other ones may have never had a touch point. Um, we're inviting them. Is there the opportunity to set up a discount code or something small to incentivize them to come, since they've already shown some sort of thing? To the, to the summit? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I think that's a, it'll be an interesting, it's an interesting discussion. Um, it, I, can, I can bring it up to the team and uh, I know that we offer scholarships, but um, those scholarships are on a first come first serve basis. Yeah. And there are, um, there's a, a way to apply for that. So there will be scholarship opportunities and, um, and perhaps that's a, that's, something that can be considered into a rubric that were you recommended by somebody or, or nominated by somebody um, at first time people. The, the interesting thing about what we're talking about these days is, um, is that we would love for um, people to come together as a group. So um, what's happened in the past, the way people got invited to the eShip Summit, um, the first year was, that they were actually um, recognized by national resource providers who were w seeing people that were working in their communities in their own custom and bespoke ways. And there was a, a list of people that were invited. The second year, the, um, the way people got, came to the summit is they heard from somebody about the summit usually. Hey, I went to the summit or I heard about this, you should go. So people were, um, kind of sharing out and um, and that's another way that people got introduced to the idea of coming to the eShip Summit. And last year was a little bit more open. So as word of ecosystem building gets out and, and people would apply and they didn't have any um, affiliation necessarily to um, any of the national resource providers or any ecosystem builders that came. This year, in recognition that, um, that a lot of the the work that we do in our communities requires um, having other people in your community recognize that this is something that needs to happen. Ecosystem building is a team sport and, and it's really hard to do it by yourself. Um, and and we, we shouldn't have to, right? There are people that are doing things, they just don't know that what they're doing is ecosystem building. So your policymakers, educators, all those other people in the community. Um, so here's what, another thing that came up on the call. Um, there was a wonderful group of people that attended the eShip Summit um, last year in a delegation. So if you all know Herman in Philadelphia, Herman just kind of started rallying people around his community to say, hey, you know what? 
there's this thing called the ESHIP Summit. It's ecosystem building. It's around entrepreneurship. Um, you should come. And why don't we come together? Because then they were able to take the things that they learned or thought about and discussed at the summit back to Philadelphia, right? So they started together, this loose brand, band of people. They brought them all together and came as a delegation. And then they were able to catalyze on that when they got back. So it's a model that, that we would love to highlight. That's a great story. If anybody would like to take that mission on in the next couple of weeks to be able to write, that's an absolutely fabulous story to write. Um, and we would love for that to be shared out um, because I think that's, a, that's a, a hard thing. So as you all know, working in your own communities, how challenging it is when you're working as, it's like working as a solopreneur, right? If you're the only one working on the project, it's really hard. So once you get other co-founders and build a team, then it's not that it's always easy, but it gets a little bit easier, right? So everybody's sharing the load. Um, that's something that we would like to model um, as an organization, as a community, as as leaders in this field, which all of you are. So that's an ask. So does that resonate with people? Does that resonate with somebody who go, who's like ready to go, oh yeah, I wanna write that? That's an open question. Or is it like, I have too many stories to tell? It's a maybe. That's a maybe, okay. Is it, um, is there, if you'd like, I'm, I'm very happy to put you in touch with, um, with Herman and, um, and we'll, um, we'll share the information. And, and if somebody would like to follow up on that story, then I can tell you that I know, at least from my end, I will do my best to promote that story and maybe share it out. So, um, so if you see in yeah. chat, I just typed something in there. It was meant to just to go to somebody else, but they had a question. Um, and if, uh, about another idea might be to, um, have something about the unsung heroes on the eShip app. Is that a proper possibility? I can ask. I can definitely ask. So yeah. just uh, to give a little background. So it's not, um, so there's a startup that actually has um, in Buffalo, New York, um, that works specifically with nonprofits and things to do storytelling during live events. Um, and it's a veteran, it's a veteran owned startup. Um, they're getting a lot of traction and, and they're working really hard. So they have offered to basically pro bono um, help the unsung because we don't have a budget <laughs> for the unsung story initiative, but um, you know, I know that I, every time I go to the eShip, I love the app. I use it quite often. And I think that's a way to make sure that um, those folks that don't get to go to certain sessions or, or aren't maybe looking at the, the slideshows can also get um, connected if it's something that um, they are interested in. So Jess, would you be able to put together just a, a very high level, um, paragraph or so and then send it over to me so that I can share that out with the team. Sure. Yeah, no, I'd love to. I'll CC um, Annika and, and Jeff and um, yes. Yeah, no problem. I can do that today. That would be great. And, um, and then, so we'll, we'll definitely do that. Avery, welcome. Um, how do you like your popcorn? It was just nutritional a yeast. What? Nutritional yeast. Okay, you and Megan, like, really? Um, I didn't know about this nutritional yeast thing, and now I'm going to have to explore this. Um, all right, so um, I just thank popped you. in the agenda notes, uh, Avery, if you'd like to see what's been yeah. shut out so far. Yeah, and sorry for being late, guys. I had a client call that just would not end. <laughs> yep. oh, those pesky clients. Oh, good. Um, so we were talking, and, and I think, you know, if anybody would like to raise their hand or just reach out to me, um, I would love to um, support the telling of that 
um, it's it's the new Philadelphia story, right? So so we'll take the Philadelphia story and and put a little spin to it to talk about what um, what a delegation of people, what a group of people can do together. Um, and it's an impactful story, and we could really use it when we're sharing out on what the importance is of coming to eship as as a team, and then walking away from it with the lesson. So, whoever wants to write that story, reach out to me. Um, no pressure, but I, a lot of rich reward in in gratitude. That's all I, I can offer. It's not. It's like fame or fortune. I can't offer you fortune, but maybe a little bit of notoriety. Okay. Um, go ahead, Attica. What else do you got? Um, I did want to, and, and this kind of leads over into the conversation around what everybody's bringing to the table is, um, I don't want this to be a thing that just Jeff, Jess, and I do. Um, it has just so evolved that we were terribly behind on everything and then started putting things together and putting them out. And now we're at a point where we're putting out so much content that, um, there is some help that we need, but there's very little time to onboard everybody into the systems that we've created. So if anybody wants to jump in and is a self-starter who can figure this out by themselves, and we welcome anyone who has graphic design skills to support our social media um, or who is willing to do some editing, those are probably our biggest needs right now. Um, everything else we have pretty solid, not least because Jessica was able to bring on a really fantastic social media expert who's doing it for us. So uh, we're just pulling all the pieces together. What are the channels that the Unsung Heroes are going out through when, when you're sharing? Right now, it's Ecosystem Builder Hub, so the website as well as a newsletter and Twitter. Um, and we have high hopes to be sharing this through our personal LinkedIn. But the truth is we'll have to see <laughs> because there's just so much else happening that um, I guess it'll come out sporadically if we remember and we have enough, we have our ducks in a row. And then just for curiosity's sake, for those of you that have been um, the leading this campaign, um, are you doing posts on your personal like Facebook, Instagram when, when the, the links back to the website or I'm, I'm just like curious about things yep. like the base level things that I can do around sharing social media posts and getting that in our forward cities flow and like right. sure and then having bringing Michelle in for a conversation to talk more about you know a deeper approach but just just right. sort of at the first yeah um I, I can't speak for Jeff or Jess I plan on sharing it um on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, like all the channels at my disposal, but that comes out of my personal accounts. And we would love to do more, but I think what's important for everybody to know is we're treating this as a pilot. There's a lot more that we want to do. Right now, this is sort of the bare minimum viable product, but we'll take every help that we can get. And what I forgot to mention was we had an awesome kickoff, I think, on Valentine's Day where the mm -hmm. Keystone podcast did one episode with audio clips about people being nominated. So for example, Eric Renz Whitmore, who works with Forward Cities, got a shout out from someone in his Albuquerque, New Mexico um, network. And so there's a whole Keystone episode about this campaign and, and some of the people who were highlighted. And we're working with Annette, our social media person, to also use some of those clips audio to spread them through social media. So we're testing out a few things and we're absolutely open to other ideas. Like whoever wants to start a postcard campaign or <laughs> I don't know, pigeons, um, we're totally open to exploring more. And so just so you know, there is a, there's so Ecosystem Builder Hub has a Twitter account. It's at Build Ecosystems, but there's also a dedicated uh, Twitter handle just for this campaign. It's Unsung Heroes EB here. I'll just, um, Will you drop it in the... the chat right now? Thank you. Yep. So that's in the chat. And so I know, I know Annika is doing a great job retweeting and retweeting from social ventures accounts. I'm doing some from my personal account plus from ecosystem builder hubs account. Um, I'm not a big Facebook user, so I don't do much there. And Jess is really big into LinkedIn. So I think Jess has been doing a lot of LinkedIn, right, Jess? Yes, um, we're also developing our last team call. 
we're developing a wish list so we can make it very kind of action oriented and simple so that uh, we'll share that with everyone in the coming week. If um, Cecilia, would you be willing to share that once we have that complete so that people can easily see kind of where we're looking for support or where people, if they want to help, can help? Yes, okay. absolutely. Um, actually, what, what might be interesting um, as we, there's a couple of people on the call um, who are, you know, new to the storytelling call or, or haven't been involved in this conversation. I would love to hear where um, we can do like a give get um, and, and think about what, what you have to offer and how you can help um, this community, this initiative, storytelling, eship, whatever it is. Um, so, so that's a that's a way to create a resource asset map, as well as the things that you'd like to work on. Would that be a, a good exercise to go through? That sounds like a perfect lead into the to the main activity of the assets, right? But I do want to say one thing before we jump to that, and I, it's just a shout out to Annika and Jess. Uh, for really um, leading this charge. I mean, they've done 99.9% .9 of the work on this and I really appreciate uh, what they've put into it. It's been awesome to see this take off and it's it's really what I had hoped would happen to see in, in the Storytelling Initiative and EB Hub, um, you know, dating back to a year ago when it started getting going. So great Yay. job. Guys. So uh, on to the... Uh, to the asset mapping. What can you give and what can you get? And, and I just want to clarify, I thought it'd be a great idea to start thinking about what's everybody bringing because not only do you have incredible experiences, but also so much passion, otherwise you wouldn't be on this call. So it doesn't have to be things that you already have, but maybe you have an interest or there's a skill that you've always wanted to try out and play around with. It could be anything. Assets, really, in the in the widest sense that you have. Um, does anyone want to start? Unfair because I had time to think about it because I said no. <laughs> I'll start, and I'll, I'll just share what you know. What I've given to this is just since since uh, I launched ecosystembuilderhub.com almost about a year ago. Um, so that's an asset. I'm happy to give, and I told them from the beginning that that's happy to host anything about this campaign on there. Um, and then when I get some more time, hopefully in the next uh, few weeks, um, hopefully be able to dedicate some more time to actually writing and contributing content to it as well. Do we popcorn or does somebody else want to pop up? Is there anything, sorry, before you move on, is there anything that you want to get out of this? Anything that would make it really worthwhile for you? I, you know, what I want to get out of it is more activation in the eShip community. So it's not a personal get, it's, it's mm -hmm. a community get. I'd like to see more people get involved in not just eShip storytelling, but eShip community in general, activate, grow the community, get the field, get, get the ecosystem builder field more engaged with eShip Summit and doing field level work rather than just their own uh, local level focus. Very cool. Thank you. Uh, you want a popcorn? Um, sure, Beth. You're on, yeah, Thanks, there you Jeff. go. Um, one of the things that I am is extremely resourceful and um, able to make connections pretty quickly and I can see vision. So, um, Talent acquisition was my uh, real career before ecosystem building or vice versa. Um, so, and I'm a good communicator and storyteller as well. So anything around that I'm, I can help add value to um, the PR campaign that we ran in our community. I could help other communities with that. Um, what I want to get out of this is, is I really want to see, I really want to feel that we're having an impact on the field and I think that will come with this year being the delivery year. And I will popcorn over to Tibby. Um, so my, I do consulting on marketing growth. Um, so anything from business development to down to just tactical digital marketing. So I can help with that. I also do some <laughs> Annika. <laughs> 
<laughs> I also do some graphic design as well. I'm not a graphic design person, um, but I do have skills with that. Um, it's more on like the web design side, but some like flyers and things too, and social media graphics. Um, I also do a little bit of writing. Uh, thank you, Jeff. <laughs> um so yeah i'm happy to help with any of those skills pr communications anything around like the intersection of branding communication and and, and digital leveraging digital tools for growth that's kind of my bag um as far as what i want to get out of it so right now i'm working with some clients locally in durham who are you know a co-working space but also local government and an arts community and so what i'm doing is trying to marry all those pieces together and have us think about more of a cohesive ecosystem building approach um, and just i'm creating the space to be a convener a curator and a connector of all those pieces so just i guess being able to learn from you smart people who've been doing this work for a lot longer than i have i don't have you know all the experience and resources i just kind of think like okay that person should talk to that person and this makes sense that you know um, these are the resources and how they can work together. So just connections and support, I would say, and then being able to know about things to get involved in, in this community. I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pop corn over to, uh, Avery. Love that name. Thank you. Your speech, Tibby. Um, so like Annika, I just shared the podcast on my LinkedIn, uh, definitely helped to sh like, I've got, I don't know, 3,600 or so followers on LinkedIn. So uh, happy to do personal promotion. Um, and uh, if you, if you ping me on LinkedIn on something, then it's really easy for me to like repost or reshare from there and, and help amplify your post as well. Um, another just tip or trick on that front is doing your post and then in the comment on your post, tagging all of the people that you want to like have it show up in their feeds. That'll make the difference between like something I post getting, you know, a couple hundred views and like seven or 8,000 views, right? So, um, so I think just, just being able to use some of those tactics uh, and uh, I'm confident that a bunch of people in this network would be perfectly happy for you to like at their name and just be prepared them. everybody you're gonna get slammed on LinkedIn yeah <laughs> and, and and then pacing is actually really important right like because if if it's too much of a flood then folks start tuning out and then they don't forward so I'd probably say no more than like one a week in terms of just having it be piece of a larger a larger you know, social media context or story. Um, and then, yeah, so that's, that's like, LinkedIn's like the only social media I actually know how to use effectively. Twitter is a total mystery to me. <laughs> and I don't do work stuff on Facebook. Um, so that's my thing. Uh, I don't, I don't actually have a request right now. I don't, um, yeah, there's nothing that, that's coming to mind. Okay, cool. Thank you so much for your popcorn too. Yeah. Pick, us, pick some of your popcorn. Yeah, I was just looking. Uh, Jess. Thank you. Hi, Avery. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks. Um, so the same thing, I think the reason why we all do this work, but, you know, my core mission is to help really hardworking, fearless entrepreneurs succeed. And so any work that I can do with people that share that vision and mission is just something that's very fulfilling to me. I know that's kind of a fluffy answer, but that's really what it is. Um, in regards to what I'm looking to get, I just, uh, same thing in lines with what Jeff and Annika have said, you know, the Unsung Hero Projects has such potential to kind of be this long-term, um, great platform to get the word out on, on people that are too humble to brag, but definitely need their, their work recognized. So that's something that I'm just really excited and passionate about growing that um, project. Uh, the other one on a professional note for myself. So um, I just wrapped up an ecosystem building project in Alaska um, this past fall, and I'm actually 
tomorrow heading down to start a three-year rural entrepreneurship project in Danville, Virginia. Um, and yeah. so if anyone is in that region, <laughs> that area, um, I would really appreciate introductions and just to get the lay of the land. So uh, Danville, Virginia is one hour north of um, uh, Durham and yeah. Raleigh and the research triangle. I know I see it too, but that's I was like, oh great, we could connect. Um, <laughs> it's a four hour train ride to DC. So it's a quaint, really uh, neat little town, but perfectly located in, in these big powerhouses. So we're gonna try to do a, a kind of neat um, rural entrepreneurship project. So that's my ask is if anyone knows anyone in Southern Virginia area or the Carolinas, please um, let me know and I'll do the work to reach out, but I would just appreciate some thoughts on intros. Um, I think Megan, Tibby, Katie, and I will just take a field trip up to Danville. Perfect. Yeah. You're an <laughs> ecosystem tour of Danville and do a yeah, ride. That would be fun. Yeah. We uh, could. A series of articles on our road trip. Yeah. No, that would be great. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's it for me for now. Um, did Megan get to go yet? No. Okay. Megan? Yeah, so um, I think I'm still, uh, in terms of what I can offer, there's so much. Where do I begin? No, but um, I think it helps for me to get hooked in directly, like Annika and I, because I didn't realize she was in Chapel Hill, like that's a thing, until I saw something on social media, and I was like, oh, she's visiting, and I reached out to other Ford Cities people, and I was like, this is great. Has anybody reached out? Like, maybe I can connect and do a walk and talk, and then Michelle's like, no, 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 she lives here, <laughs> so... <laughs> So I think having that, like that helps me to hook in and particularly because I missed a couple of these storytelling calls. Um, but I'm a super connector. Uh, I love to ask uh, meaningful questions and support people in um, organizing some project management. I mean, I have project man management skills. Obviously, um, I'm in the storytelling profession. So I have um, writing skills, but it, it'll just depend on what my bandwidth is and, and what, you know, so I'd, I'd rather have a one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two conversation to get clearer on, uh, and, and that wish list I think will be really helpful to see like a direct ask or, or a clear understanding of what's possible. Um, I also am a really great coach, so if people need like some support or some extra ears to be available as a sounding board for things um, and, and coming up with the right questions to support someone and kind of taking themselves um, where they need to go around that. And then uh, in terms of an ask, I am really interested in a deep dive workshop or conference that is connected to storytelling and social change movement building that's like really on point. So wherever that's happening, um, I would love to, to participate in something like that. So if you all know of anything, um, that would be incredibly helpful. So uh, yeah, I really am interested in that being a really creative, dynamic, vibrant um, experience, whatever that is. So that- I know Annika just lit up when you said that. <laughs> Maybe, maybe we'll create it. No, I was, okay. that's what I was going to say. Yes, that we might just have to create one. I mean, if I look around, yeah. the group, um, looks like we have some great potential. And uh, Avery just shared something, and Lauren too. So great. Stuff. Plus, Megan, I'll see you next week, so I can do some of the one-on-one. -on -one, and I think everybody here needs coaching, so be careful what you offer. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll keep an ear out for storytelling and social change. We'll yeah. No. That's sweet. Yeah. And I'm, I'm good at, if I can't do something, I'll be clear about that. I don't, I don't, I won't take on anything that I can't manage or handle. Thank you. Um, that's great. So who's next? Lauren? Sure. Hi there. And Megan, we gave you a couple suggestions. There are probably a couple of good com uh, conferences or gatherings that would probably be right in your direction there in the chat. So check them out. Um, let's see. Um, so I think realistically what I can offer is to explore meaningful intersections with the playbook. 
um, and or kind of playbook related efforts. And I can get more specific about that over time here, like I said, but I think that that's one thing that I'm really open to exploring. I also, where relevant, can share, um, like I mentioned, with some of my networks um, who I think are wise um, to ecosystem building. My network happens to be more global than national, um, so I don't know how appropriate that is, but anyway, um, I'm very open to it. Um, and then um, I think one of the asks, if, if I could be so humble to even have an ask in this group, I don't spend enough time here, so I feel even like shy about this, but it's more of a sort of a scanning thing at, the, at this moment, which is just that as you're picking up on um, stories from ecosystem builders, I think that another type of story and something that Andy Stoll and I here, my colleague, are looking at are also looking at cases of cities who are going through powerful sort of ecosystem building transformations. And I think that one of the better ways to get through some of those stories is hearing them from leaders who are actually guiding those or have, you know, over the last couple of decades. And so if you come across stories of leaders that you think could actually be developed into fuller cases, um, I think that content is, is really important and it's something we're keeping our eye out for. We're already in the midst of producing some cases like that, but they are, they are pretty heavy lifts. You know, they require a lot of time and resource and documentation. Um, but anyway, point being is we're looking for more uh, robust cases and stories around uh, kind of longitudinal ecosystem building processes. And I think that maybe some of the leaders that you will come across might have some surface some of those things. So that's just something to keep in mind of um, longer term. Cool. Um, okay, popcorn. Uh, let's see. Cecilia. Oh my gosh, I just said your name like <laughs> with such an accent. Work. Oh, I love that. Cecilia. Um, I sound more <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, so uh, in, in my, with my eShip community activator hat, um, I'm happy to be the, the person that helps ask for the connections and, and such. Um, uh, I've had the honor and the privilege of, of being able to, to have a, a greater field view. Um, and so if there's somebody who you'd like to know about, get in touch with. I don't know that I have that connection, but I know usually somebody who might. So, um, so ask. Um, I'm, I'm big on asking. I'm, I'm a pushy broad from New York, so I have no qualms about, you know, don't be shy and just say, hey, I'm just curious. Do you know? And like I said, I don't know, but I know some really smart people and really well-connected people. So those people may know people, right? So, um, so I'm happy to do that. And then, um, and then I'm here to support all of you in how to do the thing that you do um, more connectedly uh, with more inspiration and empowerment. I'm, I'm here to support that squishy, flexible infrastructure and scaffolding. So um, part air traffic controller, part switchboard operator, part guardrail holder, that's um, that's my role here as an ecosystem builder. Um, my my whole purpose in life. So I've I've learned what my ikigai is, right? So that purpose in life is about connecting people and fostering a community of belonging for better engagement. So if it's around connection, engagement, and belonging, um, that's what I totally geek out on. So if I can help do that in any way, um, I'm happy to, to do that. And, and that actually is um, part of a, a get for me is, um, is that's, what, that's what energizes me to keep going on and doing the work that I do is, um, is it makes me feel good to be able to be in that. I don't need to be the power broker or the person, the middleman or whatnot. I, I just like seeing things happening. Um, so if I can help in that way, it really does fuel me to keep going. So there's that. And then um, 
I still have stories that I want to write, and Jeff is really good about um, about reading stuff that I send over and and reminding me. Oh yeah, no, let's let's put some takeaways in here or whatever. But um, so I appreciate that, and I may reach out to one or all of you at some point to say, will you read this and make sure it makes sense, or you know, am I am I going batty um, and going off on this tangent? I feel like right now there's something cooking and in, in saying to me. Um, I have a lot of people that say they're ecosystem building these days, and I, I, I want to figure out a, a nice way to say, yeah, you're kind of ish, but, um, but networks aren't an ecosystem, connections aren't necessarily an ecosystem, how do I tell that story well um, in honoring the work that we do for complex interdependent adaptive networks? and saying, you keep using that word ecosystem, but I don't really know that you know what it means. And, you know, and so, yeah, there's a story in here that's, that's um, kind of percolating. So, so then I may run it across all of you and say, did I, did I hit it? But um, yeah, so that's it. Um, did everyone go? Just Annika oh, needs to go. Annika, oh, well, Annika, go on. I get to go less, which is great because I actually have a lot that I need. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm going to try to be humble about this, but um, let's start with what I can give, hopefully, um, ideas, storytelling and enthusiasm around this topic and in helping lead the charge on this campaign. Um, what I'm hoping to source from this group that is on this call is, as I said, right now, mostly how to get this content in front of other people um, online and offline because many people aren't on social media and that's totally fine um, Cecilia for example I didn't know whether the eShip community would be a good place to share this because I didn't want to promote my work but I think that the content might be really cool to share or if the Kaufman Foundation I know they do um, regular I forget what they're called something like briefs or voices or something if that's something that would be interesting to pick up that would be exciting of course um i'm also i'm going to bring this back into the call until the summit but help us all think about how we want to do storytelling at the summit i think as part of the campaign we will do a lot of communication around what is the summit why should you come why is this awesome there's so much content around there um so or do we want to use the summit to do more spotlights and interview people like in the hallway <laughs> and get video and audio from them? Like there's so much we can do. Um, and hold on. Another idea I had is PR with local outlets. So maybe it is newsworthy that Clark Reinhardt in Raleigh, North Carolina was featured in this national campaign for his work in supporting social, uh, 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 in supporting entrepreneurs and ecosystems. So, there's so many ways that we haven't explored yet because we don't have the capacity. So if anyone feels called to support any of these efforts now or later, that would be great because if this MVP pilot goes well, we might consider doing it bigger and doing it more properly. And then it would be great to see what else we have there. Let me see what my notes say. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah. Oh, and uh, to get back to what Cecilia was saying, I would love for all of you to stay critical and communicate that accordingly. I find it really refreshing to get a critical take on ecosystem building or someone to call bullshit on certain terminology. So it's refreshing to keep each other honest about what we're seeing in the field. And I know that like everybody who works for Kaufman is in a slightly different position of what they can say and how they can say it. But for everybody of us who can use their own voice to to talk about ecosystem building, please continue to do so, so that we can provide a balance in the field about all that's good and all that has room for improvement. And that's, that's it. And any other ideas that you guys have would be fantastic. Thank you. So does that wrap up the, the main content? We're, we're running out of time. We've got like five or six minutes left. We want to wrap up and do the key takeaways. Uh, I know, Cecilia, you've got, your, you've got something you're looking for in those, that key takeaways section. Do you want to kick that off, perhaps? Yeah, I think it's, um, um, if you can capture it in this and maybe share it on that 
other document that we have. Basically, um, what we're trying to do is to capture the key takeaways off of these um, eShip calls, right? So that what is it that uh, a big takeaway that we got out of it? If there's a resource that we were unaware of and, um, and a call to action, if there is one, so that, so that as we review or think about these calls, it's what are we gaining from all of these besides a, a great chance to geek out with the people that think and you know geek out about the same things that we do that there is um, there is some forward momentum and and part of this is for um, for us to assess the way that things are going and and where we want to go because if you don't know where you are and where you want to head then you know it's kind of all over the place the other thing is though um, a powerful thing to keep thinking about the breadcrumbs that we leave for the people who are new to this. So, so that um, as people on board and become introduced to things like ecosystem building and storytelling within ecosystem building, that we leave them a path because we need to keep evolving and moving, but people are going to come into this work and wonder, how do they get plugged in? What are they learning? You know, and, and if we can kind of document some of those key takeaways and share some of the resources as we're learning it, then it gives them a path that, um, that makes, you know, maybe this has been three years in the making for all of us to get to this point together collaboratively. Some of us have been working at it longer, some of us a shorter time, and maybe that on-ramp gets to be just a little bit shorter for the next person so that we can all move forward. Does that make sense? So if there is something that, um, that you, you learned, um, found out about um, something, some aha moment or epiphany, what, what did you get out of this call that had you not spent the last 57 minutes with us that you wouldn't have gotten to? If anybody has something, feel free to chime up or you can put it in. And it doesn't have to be right now, but if you want to add it to the, um, the agenda, that would be great. Um, I learned that, um, that there are ways. I feel like, Avery, there should be some kind of like, like I, I hate calling them cheat sheets because it's not a cheat, but it's, it's like, you know, best practice tips on on how to do it better in LinkedIn. But I wish that there was a repository for stuff like that. Um, and is there, I don't know. I'm Maybe sure it's a- some Articles out there of like how to hack LinkedIn. I've, I know I've only figured out a few of them. <laughs> But, but maybe that's a, that's a thing, right? So maybe it's like, okay, so if you use these social media platforms, here's some quick bullet points. I don't want to read, you know, I mean, you've had the, the, um, the experience of having read all of that. And basically you just gave us a reader's digest summary. Does that make sense? So yeah, Megan? Um, yes. So honestly, I've been wanting to find this conference for a while so the fact that I have two really solid leads just feels like not a specific insight or uh, but just I got I got information I needed so that reminder that um, we just have to name it and people will help us find it so thank you all um, Jeff yeah oh so what did I get um, new to me um... I guess I, I like, I appreciate seeing the enthusiasm from people wanting to uh, help them participate. Um, I think that's really awesome. And I know that's not something that uh, somebody down the future is going to be able to take away and, and do something with. Um, what I do hope that they can take away is more knowledge, just an awareness of this campaign. Um, I think it's still very few people out there in the world know about it. So um, I think that as a key resource, uh, a takeaway, a call to action needs to be just awareness of the uh, this campaign. And um, I guess we're popcorning. Um, let's see, who's next to me? Uh, Cecilia, you're right, Bill. No, you went already. Um, Annika. Everything you just said, 
And okay. I now have a few people who I'm going to email directly with specific asks for support and help. Um, Avery, anything you took away? You're muted. Oh, doesn't help when I'm muted, is it? Um, just how hard it is to stay like abreast of what everybody's doing and like I, I really empathize with the, the position you're in, Nanak, of like you've created all this great content. There's a lot of power to it. And there's just so much content out there and being produced these days that like it's really hard to, to get heard. And so I, I'm in solidarity and want to help support. Yeah. And I love what I've read. And I, I feel like you guys did just really incredible work. I can't see. Uh, sorry, there we go. Uh, Megan. So I already went, so I'm going to popcorn over to Tippy. Apologies, Megan. I, I learned that Annika's in Chapel Hill. Um, and <laughs> I learned, um, actually, I just sent a note to the, the team that I work with at the co-working um, company. And we actually, we work with Clark. Uh, as part of like a passport membership of three socially conscious past, um, three socially conscious co-working spaces. So when I saw him on the website, I'm like, it's Clark. <laughs> um, so learn that. <laughs> uh, but the idea of going as like a contingent or as a group, I thought that was a, a great idea, Cecilia. And so I just emailed a bunch of the people that I work with and I'm like, can we get a group together <laughs> to go to the summit? So that was great. Uh, who else? Jess? I think it was Jess with two S's rather than F. Oh, sorry. I thought it was Jeff. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, yeah, so, you know, a lot of the work is more than connections, but I do always say everything starts with a conversation. And the biggest value I've been getting from being connected to eShip is really those cookie crumbs of, hey, you should talk to this person and this person. And, and honestly, I mean, I've been trying to track it because I do want to submit really the value. I mean, when I went from Buffalo to Dubai to do a co-working space, I didn't have any network. And I asked eShip and eShip and Startup Grind, my two biggest networks, connected me to enough people in Dubai that within the six months I was there, every single person said, you've connected to literally everyone you needed to know in Dubai. And so... I, you know, the social capital really is so valuable for people doing the work. So um, I don't know. I just, I do think the connections and the simple being on this call and now knowing that Tivi, Tivi is in Carolina and, you know, so that stuff is going to help me with my next project. So I would say it's the social capital and the connections that, um, you know, really have helped contribute to the sex, success of my projects. Um, but that's my, my main one that sticks it out to me. Um, and with that, I think did everyone, I think everyone I got think so. Look, it's like just after three. It's time to give you back the rest of your day. So thank you, everybody. We'll upload the call. And, um, and Jeff and Annika, if you could just translate that into that other document that, uh, that we'll keep track of some of the stuff, that would be great. Um, yeah. I will take a look and see. <laughs> All right. No worries. We'll figure it out. It's, right. it's a work in motion. Bye, everybody. Right. Bye, everybody.